Hello and welcome to the Gaming Zone. I'm your host Quiz, aka The Mole. And joining me for this very special review, as in the past he's joined me in real life, we have The Quizby. Hello. And in America, Marcus Shuttle, host of Showtime. In America. And today we're going to be looking at Transformers Fall of Cybertron. And as usual, we're going to start with our first category. Presentation. So yes, as you saw then, that was presentation. So I'll just kick this one off. Overall, the present with the my thoughts of the presentation. I like the story mode. Is kind of cool, and it goes from the end, I think it's meant to go from the end of War for Cybertron up to when they bugger off to go from planet to planet on the journey, which that's, that's cool. The, the story, it looks cool, the opening cinematic slash reveal trailer with, with, with that song of Humbling River kicks ass. However, some story choices, some of the stuff with concentrating on over G1 stuff when it's supposed to be in prime continuity. Kinda stupid and kinda pointless. I didn't like that. I'll turn this over to one of you two. Which which one wants to go next for presentation? Mm. Okay, I'm gonna say I'll say take away crispy. I thought, with the presentation, I thought it was pretty decent. The story was good. It was not too long, not too short. Weapons are decent and what? <coughs> and, and cool. And how about you, Marcus? Yeah, I agree with the crispy. The, <coughs> excuse me. The presentation was very good. Um. The look was beautiful, um, as always. The graphics, the sound effects, um, you know, alt modes and all that stuff. The the voice acting, of course, was top notch. You know, can't go wrong with Peter Cullen. And uh, Frank Welker came back, didn't he? Did he did like Soundwave's voice, right? Uh, he may have, or he may have come back from Megatron, I'm not sure. Did he do Megatron's voice? Because that didn't sound like him, but it's possible. But either way, they had a, a really good voice cast. And again, Johnny Bosch gets completely screwed out thanks to Michael Bay. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, if he, did, he does have other voices besides his regular Megatron voice. Example, I personally loved his Optimus Prime voice. Mm. His Optimus Prime? Yes, I... I think I can't. If I think it was Transformers animated. He voiced Optimus Prime, which is kind of cool. Yeah, that's true. <coughs> I haven't heard his Optimus Prime voice. I have to check that out. But yeah, um, I thought the story was good. I actually loved how it started at the end, essentially, which was not expecting that until the end of that level, and I was like, wait a minute, this is the last level. That's kind of cool. <laughs> uh, the only thing about the last level, it's both endings were the same. Yeah, that was kind of disappointing. That's probably the biggest disappointment in terms of presentations. If you're going to allow us to choose to play as Optimus or Megatron, change the ending up a little bit. <laughs> I will say this from this point on, just as a warning, that probably will be spoilers. Yes. I know some of you are trying to avoid that, but I'm mentioning that now because I will be spoiling something in one second with presentation. Yeah. <laughs> But as far as the G1 stuff is concerned, I loved it. I'm a huge fan of the G1. I loved the G1 movie. I think the best Transformers movie out there. Um, also, I'm not a huge fan of Prime. Not because it's not good or anything. I just haven't watched it. Um, I, I've heard it's very good, so I might check it out. But just initially when the designs <clears throat> for Prime came out and it took the inspiration from Bayformers, I was like, yeah, I'm not going to watch that. But um, because I don't watch Prime, a lot of the issues that the mole has taken up with in terms of the story, I don't have. However, because they put it in continuity with Prime, they put it in the Prime universe, and it's supposed to be a prequel to Prime, some of the character choices they make kind of don't make sense based on what the mole has told me. 
but I left it because it's the character says I know them and I think that's what they were going for I think that was the goal of or the reason why they put in some of what they put in was to get that nostalgic kick to to f kind of focus on on the old school fans you know like the, the fans of the G1 and stuff Can I and yes <clears throat> I was trying to pin something out a second ago when you said you didn't like the models in Prime they're essentially the same models as this game and War for Cybertron, just with slight tweaks because what they did with that one, same thing they did with this game, is they took inspiration from the Bayformers one to make it look realistic, but then added hints of G1 designs and other designs to flesh out and make it look more Transformers-ish, which I like that. That's fair enough, but yeah, like I said, the, the original designs that I saw, you know, or what they showed when they were hyping up the show it looked like it took a lot of inspiration from eight warmers and from what i can tell with this game and i could be wrong but it seems like this game took a lot of its inspiration or at least the first one did for the base models it looks like it took a lot of its inspiration from um i think it was idw's run of transformers where they focused on world of war for cybertron and they had actually their artists and stuff had actually designed cybertronian models for all the transformers and Cybertronian modes, and this kind of takes uh, inspiration from that. I mean, I can I can see the inspiration from it. Um, <clears throat> but I, I mean, I could be wrong about that, since it, it's, you know, again, it's supposed to take place in the Prime Universe. But, uh, oh, go ahead. No, nothing I was going to say. Yeah, but that would totally work with... Yes. That, that, that would work with Prime anyway, because... And I don't know if Marcus knows this or not, because I know he said he hasn't seen much of it or anything like that. Essentially... Prime's first episode, you're greeted with Cliff Jumper and RC driving down the road. Cliff Jumper played by The Rock, who quickly dies after like five minutes of screen time. Mm -hmm. We never see him land. We never see him come from Cybertron. That's what these games were essentially supposed to be. They were meant to be the origin for Prime, which that's kind of cool. This is the origin for Prime. I like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. <coughs> Like I said, they, I, I think they tried to do two different things, and it kind of worked, but at the same time, because what they did was trying to focus on two different audiences, I think, in the end, it en ended up maybe alienating the Prime audience a little bit more, just because to fit in the G1 references, especially the overly blatant references to the G1 movie, um, it they had to take quite a few liberties with characters, with, with how they portrayed some characters, most notably Starscream. Um, and, and I know, Mole, I know you took quite offense at that. <laughs> you took exception to that. And, and rightfully yeah. so, if, if it's, it's supposed to be in the Prime Universe and that's not how Starscream is portrayed in Prime. But overall, I, I loved it. Um, music is great. Um, you know, the sounds are great. The the song in the end credits is a version of The Touch by Stan Bush. I, I think he's the one singing that version. I could be wrong. I love the version. Mole, you didn't so much, from what I recall? No, I prefer the original version. I also hated the fact, if you were, like, this is, this is how much the crispy was right with how identical the endings are. If you beat it as Optimus, you get a catchphrase in the credits from Optimus. And the, you got the touch. If you win as op, if you win as Megatron, you get a quote in the titles by Optimus, and then you've got the touch. Stupid. Yeah. That was a stupid decision. The other thing I didn't like, which in my opinion this goes against both G1 and Prime, it depends on which one you want to try and say the game belongs to or whatever. I didn't like what they did with Optimus in this game. How so? He has that Megaplex and he's fire and basically, at least because of how you play it and how they've made it so you can use that ability whenever the hell you want. We now have Optimus Prime saying, yeah, fuck it, I'm not going to go in there safely, I'm just going to nuke the living shit out of everything. That's not Optimus. He's more reasonable, yeah, he still shoots and stuff. He's not going to blow up the entire fucking area to take out like two Decepticons, but that's what this game's let you do. I kind of didn't like that decision. This is, this is very true. 
I think it would have made more sense if they had let you play as Ironhide and he gets the ability to tell Metroplex to do stuff. I was going to say, and to go with what you said when you played this, Marcus, mm -hmm. it's the opposite. When you're playing as the Decepticons, they have a weapon, a powerful weapon, and never use it. Which means the heroes are more inclined to go to, like, I don't know, weapon, big, like, chemical weapon warfare, whatever the hell you want to call it, than the bad guys. That makes the good guys worse than the bad guys. That's yeah. not a good thing. Uh, yeah, I was complaining about that when you shift over to the Decepticons, so the first Decepticons you play as are some of the Combaticons, namely Vortex. And uh, at one point in the level, you get Brawl with you, the, the tank, who in this game is an artillery cannon. Um, but he transforms, and he's like, so you want me to shell anything? And Vortex is like, no, I'll handle it. I'm like, no, you have an artillery cannon! Use it! But... Uh as it's new in this game and it was, as it wasn't in the pre previous one I'll let the Crispy talk about this as he hasn't said much so far the Crispy tell us about the Dinobots uh, Dinobots is they were alright Grimlock was well powerful beyond, beyond compare I just ran straight through it on hard it wasn't because with his shield, it's just <laughs> too easy. But that's what you expect from someone powerful. In my opinion, that they were all right. So. And, and cool. Personally, I will say, just to slightly disagree, there is one person in the game that can compare to Grimlock. <laughs> yeah, everyone that here knows exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you play as essentially a giant fucking Megazord from Power Rangers with a flamethrower. <laughs> yeah, but it's... I wanna play as Devastator, damn it. <laughs> yeah, Brutus was awesome. Unicron. <laughs> I wanna play as Unicron, that'd make this game a hell of a lot easier. That wouldn't be fair, you press <laughs> one attack and you instantly level. But no, I, 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 like, I like Grimlock, like Crispy said, he was powerful. Um. He was actually remarkably fast for his size, which surprised me. Because originally I didn't think he had um, a dash or a jump. And then I was walking around and I hit jump and he jumped. I was like, ooh, he's got a jump. Wait, does that mean he has a dash? I hit the dash and I was like, oh my god, he's got a dash. God mode. I have to say, when you didn't think he had a jump or a dash, did you even press jump or dash? <laughs> <laughs> I, I did. I did. That conclusion. I think I did it during quote unquote cutscene mode where you can't do anything except walk forward, and I didn't realize it was in cutscene mode because they don't make it that clear whether you're in quote unquote cutscene mode or actual play mode. Uh -huh. With at least with Grimlock, they don't. Yeah. And quickly before we move on to the next one, since we're talking about Dinobots. <clears throat> Whichever one of you two wants to talk about it, and because they, they also added Insecticons, which you can discuss in a sec, and the Insecticons killed a Dinobot. Discuss. Mm. Um, which one was it that they killed? Was it Sludge they killed? Yeah. Brontosaurus, yeah. Well, he wasn't a Brontosaurus yet, but they, they I... ripped his arm off and paled him to a wall. Yeah. I wasn't sure if it was the Bron Brontosaurus or the Stegosaurus they killed. It was a Brontosaurus. No. Snarl's the Stegosaurus. Ste I couldn't remember seeing the Stegosaurus in it. Oh. Yeah, he's the guy who killed free from the anyway. What was that? Sure, the end of his level, he died. Oh. Who, Grimlock? Yeah. I don't no. think he died. He got, he got shunted. I believe it's supposed to be implied he got shunted with uh, Shockwave through the space bridge because you see that ball of light go up and I think that's supposed to be Grimlock being teleported to wherever the hell the space bridge goes. Mm. But um, one thing I did want to mention about Grimlock that kind of disappointed me is the lack of a ranged attack. Now, I understand why they didn't give a ranged attack and it makes sense and I was kind of hoping to use his blaster cannon but that's okay. Dude. The reason I took exception to it is because when you transform into Tyrannosaurus mode he quite obviously has a flamethrower in his mouth. You see flames spewing from his mouth, and you could never use it, because they don't have a flamethrower button. I'm like, then why include that? That's kind of dumb. But there is a reason for that. Oh? He didn't know how to. He 
didn't know how to transform at first. No, but when you can transform, when you transform, if you look at the animation of it, he has flames spewing from his mouth. And I'm like, I, yeah, yeah, but I think the point, it. I think the point Crispy's getting at is if he couldn't learn how to transform yet because of how stupid he's meant to be. But as he transforms and the flames spew out, spew out of his mouth, it could be an uncontrollable thing. True. Yeah, because his rage has got to be top. That's true. And that's then true. when he controls it, he won't be doing that. I still didn't like it. Yeah. I, I thought they should have let you spew flame. Even if it's not that long range, which it wouldn't be because he'd be spewing it at the ground, I would assume. But, you know, let, let, let me use the flames. If you're going to put the flames in there, let me use them. <laughs> I, I, I agree because doesn't Bruticus have a flamethrower, like I said earlier? Yes. Okay. Which, if we, we know that, and we know there's actually a, something in the game to have a flamethrower, <laughs> like yep. a physics engine or whatever. Yep. Also, I do like the part where Swoop flies in and saves Grimlock, and you get to fly around, and it's essentially like jet fire on the back of Optimus Prime and Armada. <laughs> I didn't say like jet fire's rotten corpse been harvested by Optimus Prime. Screw you, Michael Bay. <laughs> screw you for completely bastardizing my favorite Transformer of all time. And screw him as well for what for Colonel Schrider. But yeah, uh, let's continue. <laughs> yes, let's continue, please. On to the next category, and that is, as this thing will say... Gameplay! Gameplay. Gameplay. So now I'm going to turn gameplay over to Marcus Shadow. Take us away. Thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, gameplay still top notch. It's pretty much the same as the previous game. It's pretty tight controls. It's essentially a third person shooter, is what it is. Um, I like what they've done in this game. They've expanded a lot of what you can do in terms of like, the weapons and the abilities and stuff, and that adds a lot to the gameplay. Um, it adds a lot to your strategies that you come up with because all of a sudden you're like, okay, well, what what weapon am I going to use? Um, and also adding the Teletran 1 consoles that you find throughout the area really adds to your strategies because you can go into that console and you can swap out your weapons. You can now upgrade your character um, passively. You know, upgrade your, your shields, your... Your damage, your weapon damage, your alt form damage, your alt form shields, your hit points, stuff like that, and that ah, well, radically with changes. With Teletron One being with Teletron One being the Autobot computer, and you talk about how close they'd stay to from why is it the Decepticons use? Unfortunately, they also use Teletran One, which uh -huh. for the fans of G1, that kind of doesn't make sense. Although, because it's on Cybertron, it could be argued that Teletran One was the computer of Cybertron, which if that's the case, then it would make sense that both Autobots and Decepticons could use it. It's just, it, yeah. to me, it's kind of weird for Decepticons to be using it. Oh, you're completely right. It makes sense on Cybertron. Every Transformer should use it. I look forward to going in there as Grimlock. Eh, he's stupid. <clears throat> Grimlock too stupid to know about computer. Grimlock smash. Mm. But, yeah, I mean, it's... The controls are still very intuitive. One button to transform. You have your fire. You have jump, dash, special ability. It's pretty much being there. stupid. I was gonna say being stupid does not stop you using a computer. Hi, James. Oh. <laughs> oh. Burn. And that is not being edited. <laughs> Agreed. Um. Let's see differences between ground and air because you know there are planes. Um, but air is pretty cool. You, when you dash, you kind of shifts form into more of a jet form. Even the helicopter s shifts into a jet form. Uh, for those of you who are as old as I am, the TV show Airwolf comes to mind when you hit that mode. <laughs> <laughs> but they have then added um, the ability to play as Bruticus. Yes, you could get to play as a combiner or as the mole alluded to earlier, a giant Megazord. And it is glorious, because you literally stomp around, looking down at things trying to shoot you. You get a shield, you get a flamethrower, and you get a melee attack. That's all you really need. He, he can't jump. 
Oh, oh yeah, and then he has this his ability is the, the big shockwave thing. He, she yeah. emits a giant shockwave in front of him, which is very, very destructive. I, but, I will admit something mm -hmm. hilarious with this when it comes to the transformations. I will throw out there, as Marcus can vouch for this, as I was playing with it. And I know the Crispy likes this. Thank God some Decepticons and Autobots, like Jazz and stuff, have the Spider-Man web-swinging ability to pull them uh, up. <laughs> <laughs> because I've seen before now, and I thought, okay, I'm thinking back to the Decepticons and what I can remember from stuff like G1 Prime, and some stuff in Prime and stuff. And I'm like, okay, all Decepticons can fly. Everyone knows that. And I'm, I transform as the Decepticon. And then I realize, oh, crap, I'm a car, and I'm falling to my death. And then whips himself back up. I'm like, oh, thank God. I won't do that again. Five minutes later, I did. <laughs> <laughs> And then, of course, there's the controls for Grimlock, the one and only Dinobot you play as, and you really it, feel like a weapon of mass destruction. It's no. Grimlock. They're the same as Bruticus. Are they? Exactly the same as Bruticus. Except that Grimlock can jump and dash. I, That's the only thing. <laughs> I will point and he can transform. <laughs> I will point out at this point, because we'll be getting onto this in gameplay, I fit, well, into in extras in a sec, but... He's the only Dinobot you can play as in single player. UK pre-order? Swoop. That is true. That's very true. It's, it's awesome, by the way. Um, but the, the point I was trying to make is that they tailored the control scheme to the Transformer that you're playing. And I like that because it makes you feel like you're that Transformer. Like When you play Spruticus, it makes you feel like you're Spruticus. When you're Grimlock, you feel like Grimlock. And um, I guess this could have been mentioned in in uh, presentation, but it falls under gameplay as well. The fact that in the story mode, when you play as a certain Transformer, they've tailored the not only the play style, but the ability to that Transformer. Um, the big case in point is Soundwave. First of all, when you first play a Soundwave, he's a tape deck, which I'm like, yes! <laughs> he's just a tape deck sitting in the middle of the room, and you hit Transform, and he pops up, and I'm just like, that's awesome. But they tailor him because when you play him, his special ability is a unique special ability, and that is he can eject, laser beak, and rumble. And he actually has a laser beak, eject, rumble, eject, which I think is completely awesome. <laughs> yep, a tape deck. How's that for old school? I think those three, maybe the few people who are going to be watching this, are maybe old enough to actually remember tape decks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can find one now in your antique shop. It's just, yeah, it's just, I like those little touches where they're like, because it's story mode, we're going to change the characters. We're going to give you things that you wouldn't be able to get in multiplayer or forms you wouldn't be able to get or abilities you wouldn't be able to get. Because, you know, you can't summon Laser Beacon Rumble in multiplayer. I'll tell you that right now. Um, but It'd be awesome. It would be awesome. But it's little Pretty touches like that that I absolutely uh, love. Um, oh, one thing that we probably should have mentioned in presentation... Um, and I will mention it here, is the last level. The last level of the game, you switch off between Autobots and Decepticons. Um, and the way it does it is old school G1 style, where it has the logo and it, the logo flips around. All that was missing was the, the sound effect that goes with it, that do 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 That would have been perfect, but I thought that was a nice touch. But overall, I, I loved the gameplay of this game. It's, it's very tight, very... It's, it's uh, skill oriented. It's I guess you would consider it a twitch shooter, but because of the abilities, it it's almost not because you you have to use your abilities in a smart way. Otherwise, you won't win. <laughs> Even in multiplayer, your abilities is like half the fight. Um, I will say that's I'm, big... sorry. I'm done. I can... Oh, sorry. I was going to say I will say I liked and hated that. No. I liked it for most of the parts. I really hated the jazz level. Yeah. Well, you're not a sniper, so, I mean, everyone's going to have a level they don't like, because the levels are designed with that Transformer in mind, so they're kind of gimmicky, and, and I can understand why, because, again, like I said, a lot of the Transformers have their own unique abilities, and so they build the levels to force you to use that ability, but at the same time, it's like, eh. <laughs> I mean, I can kind of agree with, with the mole on that, <laughs> you know. Um, I like yeah. the jazz level, because I'm a sniper at heart, but hey, to each their own. Yeah, to, oh, I like the best one. <laughs> but to be fair, it's not just the sniping, because once I got hold of another gun, 
it was better. I still didn't like it because I didn't like the whole having to whip up to this platform, kill one tiny little Decepticon, whip over to another one, do the exact same thing. I was like, oh, come on. I don't like that. But it's one of those, it's probably a personal preference. That was the only level I didn't like. Because to be fair, when the helicopter, or not the helicopter, the, the Decepticon does that as well when he starts to whip through. I didn't mind the Decepticon version. It was just the Jazz one I didn't like. Right, because it's the first level where you get in. And like I said, like I just alluded to, it's 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 gimmicky. It's That's what it does. It gives you the Transformer with this unique ability, and then it gives you a level that forces you to learn how to use that ability. And unfortunately, um, and if you look through any game that does this, the, the, the quote-unquote tutorial level for any type of new ability you get is essentially a gimmick level that forces you to use that ability to its fullest extent so you know what you're doing with it later on. And that can lead to, you know, you kind of hating that level because it's like, okay, yeah, I, I know what I'm doing, just stop. <laughs> hey, yep, and um, what were you saying, the Crispy? You were saying something a second ago. I think I may have accidentally stepped on you. I can't remember that. I think you were saying a level you liked or didn't like. Um, I like the cliff jumper. The stealth stuff. Go yeah. invisible and execute. Which, to my disappointment, wasn't in the multiplayer. Yeah. yeah. And with it being in the prime universe, I will say, cliff jumper will never ever go away. <laughs> <laughs> the cliff is here to stay. Bringing it via Telegram 1, as you said. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anywho. Getting back game... to the X Pound. <laughs> yeah, that's gameplay out of the way. Let's move on to our next category, which is. Extras! Now we come to extras, which involves multiplayer. Multiplayer un unlockables and any little touches like DLC and stuff. It, uh, now we come to extras, which is basically multiplayer, unlockables, and any DLC that come in or recently released. And what do you think about the multiplayer? Yes. Uh, me? I I like the multiplayer. I I I did enjoy the multiplayer. What are you waiting for? Uh, my favorite mode it isn't multiplayer though, and it's going to be in in extras. My favorite's an uh, escalation mode for multiplayer where you get to co-op and stuff. That yeah. feels a lot more fun. Multiplayer is fun. My only problem with multiplayer is so many people just play the tank so they can blast the living shit. Yeah. Sh it gets old fast. Mm. And the spin and attack. So the point, back. Yeah, <laughs> to, the, to the point where I've almost stopped playing the that multiplayer mode now because it, it's not that fun if everyone has to be a tank or a truck just so like the planes and the cars don't stand a chance. It's like, yeah, that's yeah, not that fun. Which is funny what? because when we were playing the demo, I was destroying things with my car. I, mean, I was destroying tanks and stuff too. Like, they'd be yeah. all spinning, I would just back up, da -da 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 and they'd be dead. <laughs> Not this time. Really, they changed it. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. To, to be fair, you still can do that. Yeah. Just rip. In, in the demo, while you were doing that against one tank or two tanks, there was like three or four cars and planes on their team in different locations. This time, you're when you go into a room, a lot of times you go into the room and it's a room full of tanks. You're not leaving that room alive. True. <laughs> but I'm only taking down at least one with me, I guarantee it. <laughs> I guarantee you probably be not. They all see you at once. Because if they all see you at once and they all blast at once, you're probably going to die. But again, that's, that's not a downfall to the multiplayer thing. It's got enough modes and stuff. It should be fun. That's yeah. more the people doing that just so they can get all the XP, which I'm hoping in a few a few weeks' time when everyone's got the XP, people will start playing as the other classes and it'll become fun again. Yeah, I, hope so. I, I haven't actually played the multiplayer mode itself yet. I, I, would just, I just assumed it was basically the same as demo. Is that about right, Mole? It's the same. Yeah, I've catched the flag. 
mm-hmm. and head hunter mode. Right. Which head hunter mode is where you essentially you shoot one of the Autobots or Decepticons dead. They drop their balls. Drop. You pick up their balls and you oh, put them inside. <laughs> don't do it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I want your manhood. Uh, <laughs> and it's on cubes. <laughs> Not cubes, though, they're little round balls. Yes, they are. They're the John cubes. Little balls. They look like little balls. Essentially, uh, you're killing Optimus Prime, stealing his balls, and I'm going to put them in a basket <laughs> somewhere. Uh, oh, God. Okay, well, how would you have worded it, when, like I said, with the fact they're sphere shaped? Uh, and the John? <laughs> Okay, and a jump. Spark? Board. Maybe? Are you trying to uh, steal their spark? Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and once you pick them up, you then go and deposit it into the things, and whoever's got the most balls at the end wins. Yeah. But that's the end of that mode. But yeah, what did you think about escalation mode then, since you played that one, Marcus? I love it. I, I mean, but I, I had a lot of fun. My only complaint with escalation. Well, aside again from the players, because some of the players were completely retarded, but um, my only like the one I still has when I team with you. I mean, oh, <laughs> yeah. Next time I'm not gonna open the door for you. Um, I know my biggest complaint is probably the limitation of the characters, because it, the characters and the factions are tied to the map that you're playing. So depending on the map, you'll be their Autobot or Decepticon, and you'll be stuck as one of a member of a team. So there's like only one map with Optimus. There's only one map with Megatron in it. And that, that gets kind of annoying because it's like, yeah, I want, I want to play as Optimus or I want to play as, you know, Starscream. And it's like, no, sorry, you don't get Starscream in this level. <laughs> yep, but now we'll look at the unlockable stuff, which uh, the Crispy here has actually got all the, auto, all, uh, all the audio logs and... All the blueprints and stuff. What did you think about collecting them and what it gave you? Uh, basically, all the blueprints do is unlock all the weapons that you you probably see through the story mode. Mm-hmm. Which you probably pick up like the riot cannon or the techno vault or shredder. Yeah, that. <laughs> it's all the weapons you uh, see in escalation, right? Uh, that's yeah. Sh- be called yeah. Gear Shredder. This is part. This is taking elements from base stuff. Shouldn't it be called the Gear Shredder? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, it should. Yes, it should. Anyway, <laughs> right. And the audio logs are pretty much all, all mapped. And there's, <laughs> they're all over the place, and it does create, take some time to find them all. And. And there's a few funny little bits in it as well, which made me laugh. Like, a uh, Grimlock game. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I like how the, the uh, audio logs, they kind of tell the history of the history, if you will. Kind of what led up to the war, or what's been going on while your character has been doing this or the other, like, for instance, um, when you're going through his Grimlock, you get Shockwave's logs, so you kind of learn what Shockwave's been doing to Grimlock and the Dinobots, and, you know, the fact that he created them, essentially, or, well, he made them Dinobots. But I thought that was a nice touch. That It's like, yeah, we're going to show you what goes on outside of your character. My favorite thing with the audio log, which I don't know if everyone's going to like this, but... The part where they point out it couldn't be G1 that much because essentially Optimus Prime is only a Prime because Megatron existed. And it mentions the fact when it talks about Megatron, the cool quote was something along the lines of the auto Optimus Prime and the Autobots are wrong. Megatron did not create this war. This war created Megatron. Mm. Ah. Awesome word. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like that's kind of cool. The, basically, the revolution, because they were having the revolution, that's what made Megatron Megatron because he finally realized, wait a minute, what these Decepticons, what these other Autobots, they probably would have been at the time as they were rising up to beat Decepticons, 
what these people are thinking, what their beliefs is, everything they are. I agree with that. They need better leadership, however. I'm the guy they need. I, I, I kind of like that. And it's like Megatron's not the guy that causes all of this. It gives the Decepticons real depth because as a result, they're actual people fighting like, like, like the American Civil War and stuff like that. They're actual people with actual beliefs. Whether or not it's right or wrong does not matter. It's two sides who both believe yeah. in what they're doing. And Megatron's just the type of guy to lead the side instead because he agrees with it. I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he wants to return it to his former glory. Uh, yep. As he mentions it so many times. <laughs> That's a nice touch. A yep. nice touch. Speaking of Megatron, as I know for a fact, Marcus Shadow really loved this stuff, so I'm going to let him take this part of the extras away. Marcus, tell us about the dip- bonus pre-order DLC, as we're discussing DLC. Yeah, well, as uh, Mole alluded to earlier, the UK side uh, got Swoop as their pre-order, their exclusive pre-order. Um, they also got what we in America got, which was the G1 pack, which consisted of uh, G1 Optimus Prime, which is awesome, and you can use him in, uh, in story mode, which is doubly awesome. And I think... Um, and I don't know if the Destroyer gets this, but I distinctly remember seeing when I hit the melee attack button with G1 Optimus, he actually pulled out his Energon hacks, uh, yep. which I thought was but a nice touch. Um, like you mentioned, you can use him in multiplayer as well, but for some reason you can't use him in Escalation. And you're absolutely right, Mole. You can't use G1 Optimus in Escalation, which is disappointing and, well, to be honest, kind of false advertising because memory serves... That's what they said when they announced the G1 stuff. That no, you can use G1 Optimus only in Escalation mode, and that's the only mode you can't use them in. Uh, no, no. I thought it was multiplayer. Yeah, no, as as Richter Hammer pointed out, they said multiplayer. Ah. However, that's how they advertised it for War of Cybertron 2, and in War of Cybertron they were only used in Escalation mode. So that's what everyone believed it would be the case of with this one. Ah. It's just this, but it flipped it on its ass, basically, and it's like, what the hell? When we expect it in multiplayer, you give it as an escalation. When we expect it in escalation, you give it as a multiplayer. Give it to us in both. Um. <laughs> well, you can play as Optimus in story mode. Yep. You can. G1. Yeah, in multiplayer. Um, the other stuff you get with the G1 pack, you get a primary weapon that's a laser pistol that looks like Megatron. Um, There's throwback blaster. Yeah, it's called the Throwback Blaster. You, it shoots kind of like a magenta energy beam, and as the description of the gun says, it makes a pew-pew sound when it fires. And basically, that just means it's the only gun in the game that does not fire bullets, it fires lasers, so it makes an appropriate sound. Basically, the G1, the pew-pew. Which is I said, I said, did you just say magenta? Yeah, it's like a thing slash magenta. You're a dude. We're only supposed to have any colors found in Windows Paint. So we say <laughs> pe- say pink, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an editor. I'm sorry. I have a color palette. Mm. But um, yeah, no, I think it's cool. Also, when you get a kill shot with the Megatron gun, it vaporizes them in in pink energy. There, are you happy? I am very. Um, but the best feature of this gun is the fact that while you have it equipped, whenever you switch your weapon or you transform to your alt mode or back to robot, you get the classic transformation sound from G1. Yep. And that made me... The drawback, the gun's not that strong. You look at its stats and they're all essentially like rank 4 stats, which is kind of crap. I found the gun to be powerful enough. I used it for like like the first half of the Octopod campaign, just especially through the Optimus Prime levels, because let's face it, G1 Optimus Prime needs that classic transformation sound. Um, but Maul, yeah. I believe you found the power of the gun to be somewhat lacking. Yeah, like you, like you said then, the transformations and the noises and stuff, it's cool, but for me, that's all polish. If I'm playing a game like this, and it's a Megatron gun, and the Megatron gun in the series is supposed to be so powerful, I'm sorry... The fact it's like probably the, if not one of the weakest guns in the game, that kind of annoyed me. I, I, I hardly, I used it once, 
found out how I used it once or twice, found out how weak it was, and I was like, yeah, I'm not using that again. Mm -hmm. Same here. Yep. Um, I mean, the other gun that you get is the shockwave replica. The, the gun, it's like shockwave in his gun mode. Sling, slingshot. Yep, it's called the slingshot. Essentially, you shoot energon bullets. Now, I know that doesn't sound very appealing, it doesn't sound very good. It is a fucking awesome weapon. It's powerful, it's accurate, it's got range, and you can hit multiple enemies with it, and it pretty much insta-kill almost anything it hits. As, aside from the larger Transformers, you have to hit them like a couple <laughs> times, but it's still a very powerful and just all-around super useful gun. I, I love it. It's this super gun. powerful against Leapers. Oh, yes. I will say... <laughs> I will, say, I will say the slingshot is definitely that powerful. I equipped that whenever I could as my heavy weapon. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and how cool is it to have shockwave on your arm? Seriously. <laughs> but since we're discussing weapons here, before we look at DLC pack one, I'll say to the crispy to kick you off. What's your favorite weapons, both? Normal and heavy. My favorite weapon would, would have to be the right cannon. Uh, my favorite heavy weapon is probably the Chaos Rift and Combustor because that was awesome. I'll get to the insect guns. <laughs> cool. Did you want to tell us a little bit more about the, about those weapons and what type of weapons they were? Oh, sorry. The uh, right cannon was basically Megatron's main weapon. And it's. Every thing about it is powerful. It's, it's a rocket launcher. Pretty much. <laughs> it's pretty much a rocket launcher, just a primary weapon. And then when you fully upgrade it, it becomes a nuke launcher. <laughs> yeah, I love that. The last shot becomes a, a nuke. A nuke. <laughs> Yeah. Does 500 damage. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and what about the heavy uh, weapon? The Chaos Rift and Combustor Bates is it's like a cluster... Like a cluster bomb launcher. Nice. It mm -hmm. just disintegrates anything in its radius. Right, and cool. And, okay, favourite weapons, how about you, Marcus? I can kind of agree with Crispy, um, but also, as I stated earlier in the review, I am a sniper at heart, so I actually do did love the, uh, was it the Energon Charge Rifle, I believe it's called? The Sniper Rifle? The Nuclon Charge, charge Rifle, rifle. Yeah. yeah. That, that thing is awesome. I, I've not used the fully upgraded version yet. I mean, I have it fully upgraded, but I haven't tested out the whole um, get multiple kills in a row to make it more powerful yeah. thing, but... It doesn't make it more powerful, it just makes the charge a lot quicker. Ah. So basically, if you got it three kills in a row, it charges up straight away without nice. waiting. Nice. I can see that being useful. Um, I did like the Riot Cannon. Once I got it with Megatron, I was like, yeah, I'm buying this and upgrading this all the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, I liked the Megatron gun, as I alluded to. But I, I stopped using that about halfway through the Autobot campaign. Um, mm -hmm. primarily because I found weapons that were better, and I was like, yeah, I don't need the transformation, especially since after you stop playing with Optimus, you don't play him as him again, so I kind of lost the need for that sound. Um, heavy weapon. Definitely liked the Chaos Rift Combustor, the, the big-ass grenade launcher. Although I do have to say my favorite heavy weapon was probably the uh, Slingshock. That's the weapon I, I used basically for the entire game, for the most part. Whenever I could, I'd have that equipped, because it was that good. Um, oh, for primary weapons, I also do have to say, I did like that, the harpoon gun, the electro, whatever the hell that was. The electro uh, bolt. Yeah, it's a little tough to use because, um, it's a single shot thing and it hits only one target, but it pierces, again, like I said, it's a harpoon gun, and uh, for those of you who have played Crackdown, think the harpoon gun from Crackdown, because it, it's essentially that gun, it pierces enemies, shoots through them, and sticks them to things, like walls and crates and stuff. <laughs> It's it explodes them. And the harpoon gun? No, it sticks them. It's the, the other gun is the one that explodes them. And quick question to the crispy: on a scale of one to ten, 
How annoyed do you think Marcus Shadow would be if during the editing of this I decide I'm going to cut everything he just said and end it with him saying I agree with the crispy and then cut to my thoughts? <laughs> Ten. Be funny. Ten, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now there's two reasons. But no, uh, it's good enough. Uh, I was gonna say my favorite weapon is, oh, I forgot the tech bolt. I think it's called. Yes, the tech bolt. Ah, uh, it's the tech bolt, which essentially, it's like the proton packs off Ghostbusters. It fires a big yeah. weapon. <laughs> it's an arc lightning gun. Yeah. And I like just essentially keeping that still on an a on one of the like autopilots or Decepticons yeah. against holding it in place. It vaporizes them and electroshocks them. And the cool thing, if there's a group of them close enough, it arcs yeah. onto the other. And yeah. you can you can do what I did a sound wave. I didn't do what Marcus Shadow said he did of la laser beak and and all them so yeah, and basically then do all the work for him. Instead what I did was run past all the enemies and go down one of the narrow corridors so they all followed me and just fired them with that until they all evaporated. <laughs> yeah, and and actually let me correct you on that. I didn't let them kill the guys. They kind of did it before I realized what they were doing. Because Laser Beak all flew off, Rumble ran off. I'm like, where are you guys going? And I go run off and I just see a litter of corpses that following the <laughs> they went. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and cool. Um, it, my favorite heavy weapon is the slingshot, which they talked about. My second favorite would be the gear shredder, because I like both of those two, probably about equal. Mm. The gear shredder essentially fires a disc that kills people. My, well. Yeah, my only problem with the gear shredder is I've used it in multiplayer mode. They nerfed the living crap out of that in multiplayer. At least it seems like that to me, because I've stood there in multiplayer and I've shot someone like five or six times with this damn disc and it doesn't kill them. Yet in single player, one shot, boom, dead. Mm. I can understand why they probably did that, because I don't want a one hit kill in multiplayer. Yeah, but, I, but, but make it two or three, not like five or seven or whatever it takes to kill this guy. Yeah. Mm. But that, that leaves us with one final thing left to discuss, which I'll take this one away before we go on to the next category, which is <coughs> DLC. Pack 1 is already out, which I believe is called the Havoc Pack. I believe it contains Ultra Magnus, Wheeljack, Blastoff, Zeta Prime, and I want to say Perceptor. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have that pack. I like it. Cool mm -hmm. looking cards and stuff like that. I do have that pack. And I do like some of what's in there. I use, uh, I'm actually using Perceptor's body for my tank. I'm using his body for my tank. And as a little fun aside, I actually found, uh, messing around with it, uh, when Richter was here last week. If you take Perceptor's body and his cannon, and you change the head, I, you can't change it to the one you would need, but you change the head and then you change the colors, you can effectively create Soundwave as a tank. <laughs> and he looks like Soundwave because he's got the cannon over his shoulder. All my multiplayer, all my multiplayer ones I use, essentially the transformation, not the parts, but the transformation, are all DLC. I have the car, I have the Optimus Prime G1, I then have the tank as the proper tank. I have the actual plane that this one uses, and stuff like that. Which that that's cool. How about you, the crispy? Did you have DLC pack one yet? Um, no, I didn't. Ah. Not yet. That's cool. I have to agree. Uh, well, there, my all mine uh, are all DLC chassis. <laughs> most most of mine are just random ones that I thought looked cool. So yeah, that's cool as long as they look. I cool. like them. <laughs> Yeah, your car looks pretty cool. Yeah. Moves pretty fast, too. I, I only say his car looks pretty cool, not because I'm saying all of his other vehicles look horrible. It's just every time I've played with him, he's a car. Just in case people are thinking I was offending him. Yes. <laughs> like, like every time he's seen me, I'm a plane. A helicopter. To be fair, I swap between them. My plane's the healer, the helicopter's the one if I need a turret. But yeah. Just to, just to throw this out there for DLC... Give us one second. That sound you can probably hear then is me going inside the box. 
the instructions here, the pack of the instructions, because uh, following up from this review, me and Marcus and maybe the Crispy if he gets them two at the same time, we plan to do a short follow up video of our thoughts on the DLC, because from the 12th of next month is Dinobot Destruction Pack, four multiplayer character pack including the legendary Grimlock, Slug, Snarl and Swoop. Which that's kind of cool. Aww, and then they're not gonna let us play a sludge because they killed him off. Screw you. <laughs> I want the brontosaurus. Anyway, continue. It's still using you. Yeah, massive fury pack that is unavailable from the 26th of next month. Variety pack of multiplayer and single player characters includes G1 Retro Optimus Prime and Sharp Shot. And from the looks of it, it includes some other vehicles and stuff like that. For more details on that, go to TransformersTheGame.com, I believe they say. But essentially, some of that we've already reviewed here, because some of that's the pre-order stuff on the second pack. But we will discuss what, what, whether or not we like what they've done with the Dinobots and DLC. But anyway, moving are, on. Are the Insecticons supposed to come out with the Dinobots? They come out, the Insecticons are part of the Optimus Prime one, I think. Ah, okay. The final okay. verdict. Anyway, moving on, final verdicts. Um, I absolutely loved the game. I loved the G1 references. Some of them were kind of shoehorned in, but, I mean, I got giddy as a schoolboy when certain references popped up. I'm like, yes. Um, just top to bottom, this game is certainly polished, certainly has a lot for the old school fans. Um, as I alluded to, or not alluded to, but as I said earlier, for those who are Prime fans, they might get a little put off by the differences in character portrayal between this game and the Prime uh, cartoon, just because of what they put in. But, I mean, if you can look past that, it, it is a great game. It plays very well. Um, great soundtrack. Just overall... It's a great game. Um, what what is your rating system, Mole? Ten. Got it. Yeah, out. Okay, uh, I'll give this game. I'll give it an eight out of ten. Uh, okay. And how about the crispy? Uh, I I give it a seven out of ten mainly because when you when I'm playing multiplayer, I get the loading screen. And it stays there. And uh, having to quit the game just to get into a game. No. So that's why I give it a markdown. So overall, though, good game. I mean, I'm probably gonna agree with the Crispy's rating. I'll give it a seven. The reason I'm gonna gonna give it a seven, I will say, gameplay is pretty solid. The game is pretty damn enjoyable. However, some things like down one, stupid story decisions, which that's fair enough. I could look past them if it wasn't for the sheer amount of glitches in this game. For example, as he didn't mention it in his final verdict, but I spoke when I was when I've been listening via Skype to Marcus Shadow when he's playing, he's had to restart his PlayStation multiple times because the game has froze. Yeah. <laughs> He did it to me like three or four times. That, I've had mine restart once. Yeah, I've had mine once. Crispy's just said he's had it. Apparently, from what I've seen online, it is essentially other people are getting this glitch a lot. There was also a whole message post of loads of people experiencing graphical glitches on certain game consoles and stuff. It's like. Oh, it's not as polished or finished as it should be. It, it almost feels like they put it out because they had a deadline. And it's like a load of the G1 stuff is in there just for the sheer purpose, in my opinion, of saying to the G1 fans, hey, excuse all the glitches and stuff, look, we've got this. So instead of finishing the game, they've just put a little bit more shine on it to try and please people, which that's kind of lazy. That's essentially like... Last last time when we, when we reviewed WWE 12, I believe it was, when, mm -hmm. hey, the online servers don't work, but here's last year's Kane. Yeah, pretty much. That's essentially what this G1 stuff is, in my opinion. I, that's why I, I agree with Chris, I give it a 7. Mm -hmm. 
But again, check, check, check it out if you like Transformers. It's still worth picking up. But that, that ends the review of Transformers. Fall of Cybertron. As always, that was your host, Quiz, a.k.a. The Mole.